KMR. We got a little technical talk. I've got two very interesting eccentric shafts in front of me. We've got a 12A based four rotor eccentric shaft in the forward position. And then we've got the much more common and what we generally see in build nowadays, which would be the 13B based four rotor eccentric shaft. Um, very rare to have both of these in one spot. Quick shout out to DNA Garage and Mazda Tricks as both of these projects are relative to them and we just happen to have them here right now so we can talk about them. Um, I think a lot of people don't even realize that although the eccentric shafts are completely custom, um, depending on a 12A based or 13B based shaft, the majority of your four rotor components are based off of those OEM components. So if you're building a 12A based four rotor, you need your custom eccentric shaft, you need your bearing carrier plates, and the majority of your other parts are going to be 12A components. And similarly on the 13B based or 26B four rotor, your custom shaft, very pricey, very custom, but your bearing journals are designed, obviously, to run those 13B-based rotors, race bearings. These are modified 13B counterweights. Um, you know, everything that is being built around this eccentric shaft or the modified bearing carrier plates is going to be, for the most part, OEM Mazda components available at Mazda Tricks, your Mazda dealers. The majority of your cost in building a four rotor is in the shaft and those carrier plates, those bearing carrier plates, because those are the custom one of a kind CNC components. Um, these would be similarly uh, used shafts if you're going billet. Um, this particular 26B shaft could be used in a cast iron based block or in a billet-based block. Um, it's really up to the end user at that point. And you can see, because these were originally 13B-based counterweights, they had to be modified substantially. A lot of weight was removed from both of those counterweights. Um, very interesting stuff. This 12A-based four-rotor shaft came from Japan, but we believe it was originally sourced from either New Zealand or Australia. And one of the reasons people originally were going with 12A based four rotors is if you think 10, 15 years ago, there was a lot of 12A components and to increase displacement and save weight, the 12A four rotor really seemed like a great idea. As we moved into the more recent times, 12A components became a lot harder to acquire. They're actually rare parts. And Mazda, as a manufacturer, has stopped manufacturing some of those 12A components. So nowadays, you really don't see very many 12A-based four-rotors. And the majority of your 26B blocks, your four-rotor blocks that are being built, depending on how many bearing carrier plates you're using or what shaft you're using, um, you're basically using 13B components from Mazda because a lot of those components are still available. Your side plates, your rotor housings, your rotors, gears, um, bearings. So kind of interestingly enough, I think a lot of people think building a four rotor is like stacking two 13Bs together. I think it's a lot more like getting a custom shaft and building a custom block around it using OEM components. It would be more like building a V10 or V12 LS motor or a V8 based Hayabusa motor where you're buying an aftermarket block or kit that utilizes OEM components. And that's really what a lot of the aftermarket 26Bs, four rotors, 
whether they're 13B based or 12A based, are doing. You're taking a shaft, adding your bearing carrier plates, and then a lot of OEM parts on top of it. It's great to see manufacturers really pushing the envelope. Um, the modern billet motors have come a long way, and I think as we start to see cast iron parts in the 13B category either grow in price or become less available, um, we're going to continue to see more and more billet components come out. Talking about those billet components, um, you can see with right here uh, a 20B even, um, you would be able to take this bearing carrier plate and you wouldn't necessarily have to go aluminum or billet on your other plates. Essentially, you could use a billet carrier plate and then cast iron components. And the same could be done with 13 Bs, 20 Bs, or four rotors. It kind of brings us back to the shafts. If you're planning a four rotor build, if you're planning something custom, always think about it. You can mix and match. Um, obviously not 12A to 13B, but you can mix and match between cast iron and aluminum to suit whatever your needs are. But building four rotors really do start with that right there custom eccentric shafts. Both of these are heading out to polishing. Um, the one in the back is new. It's just back from balancing. It's a little dirty. It's going to go out, get micro polished, and then uh, preparation for assembly. And then the used 12A based shaft does have some burn marks, but they're expensive. We're going to refurbish this for our customer, and hopefully he will have this back up and running in a 12A based peripheral port sometime in the future. So this has been a little KMR Tech Talk. Uh, rare to have both of these shafts hanging out. Again, shout out to Mazda Tricks. Uh, shout out to DNA. Um, these are going out for micro polish. And uh, we're going to brap on out of here. I got the brap, brap. That's not four rotors. There's eight rotors potential on the table right there. Um, two four rotors. Pretty dang cool. So thanks for watching. Ask questions. We're building some cool stuff really soon. We're always happy to talk rotary.